Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Helmets of the World. I'm Mike B, and today we're going to be looking at the Austrian M1 clone, better known as the M75, but I'll kind of get into why I don't want to necessarily call this an M75 per se, because they were using this before 1975, but I'll explain what an M75 is. So, anyways, this was obviously patterned after the US M1, just like a lot of other European countries, that, uh, Western countries I should say, after World War II did. It was an effective helmet pattern. People liked the look of it. Uh, the liner system, you know, the removable liner was kind of a cool thing. Uh, Germany didn't have the removable liner as much as the um, other countries did, but Austria was one that did have the removable liner. So right away you'll notice that, you know, there are a couple differences between the US M1 and the Austrian M1. First of all, the black chin strap from the liner right there you can see is... A pretty dead giveaway that this isn't a U.S. helmet, right off the bat. And then if you turn the chin strap, that's the all. That's the other dead giveaway is the German and kind of Central European style of um, the quick release chin strap buckle, and then the secure one for God knows what. Um, this one, if you pull hard enough, like it won't just come off if you're wearing it, but like if you pull hard enough, like if uh, you fall or something, and instead of snapping your neck, this will just pop the chin strap off, so the helmet comes off, which is a good idea. Also, you'll notice that the net is pretty thick, and uh, I mean, it looks similar to the World War II ones, but it's really not. It's different color and everything, which is fine because it works well. The Austrians love it, and rightfully so, because it looks reminiscent of World War II, but it's still got its own little twist on it. So, we'll kind of get to the liner system now, and I'll show you the difference between this and an M1. So, you've got the, uh, the like, European tongue style. This one's got nine tongues, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's got kind of the German post-war and Finnish little vented front up there and got a bunch of holes in there. And then it's got these two straps that come in and kind of reinforce your head uh, behind there, if you can see that. These two nylon straps, they're pretty strong, thick. And uh, this one appears to be relatively unissued, which is pretty cool. This is the one I have in my collection because it's my giant melon. You're going to find sizes usually stamped right there. This one's 59 to 61. These are adjustable by lifting up the rear of the tongues, and you'll notice that there's a little strap right here. Well, this thing would get the hell out of the way. All right. So there's a little strap right there that you pull on it to make it tighter, obviously, and then let it out for more room. So this is for people with large melons like myself, and um, obviously there's different sizes. I think the first size is 53 to 55, and then you go 56 to 58, and then this one. It's all the three sizes that I know. And then uh, I'm sure that's the manufacturer in the 94. So this is probably from 1994. They were using these up until I think it was the early 2000s when they finally decided to replace it with a Kevlar composite design. Um, so to call this an M75 would actually be incorrect because this one doesn't have the little retaining hooks right here that keep the liner in there more securely. So... I think they started using these in the 60s or the 70s. Um, I think they had the, the regular M1 style liner system before. Honestly, not too sure. There's a lot of conflicting data about that, but we'll just say that this is an M75 for representation purposes, and it was made in 1994, so obviously. The shell isn't dated. I mean, it's got some remnants of some markings on it, but not enough to even warrant showing you. Um, so it's pretty pointless to do that because you can't read it. And... Uh, don't want to really waste time. What I will do, though, is I will just take the liner out and show you the outside, which if you look at pictures of the Austrian Bundeswehr, a lot of times they will just be wearing the liners um, when they're doing, like, parades and training and stuff. And they just wear the steel one when they're actually doing stuff that requires that. So this has got a very similar shape and size to the US M1 liner. It's plastic, though. It's not fiberglass. It's just straight-up plastic. And uh, it's very lightweight. I mean, super just like the US ones, but um, yeah, so you can buy these individually too, and they're not that expensive really, but kind of neat, and uh, they got their own chin strap, which is pretty cool too. So that's what the liner looks like inside of the shell. Uh, the nets are kind of a pain in the butt because they always come like not tucked in, so you gotta just do that, but it's worth it to get one of these. This is a great example of a helmet that, you know, took the US M1 style, cloned it, and actually made it a little bit better in my opinion. I love the, uh, European nine tongue liner system. It's really comfy and it's uh, it looks really good. Like it's aesthetically pleasing as well. So yeah, the Austrian M1 helmet and uh, or M75. I know the title of the video is M75, but that's just to give people kind of uh, a familiar 
um, nomenclature so they can click on the video and then kind of find out that it's not exactly an M75 if it doesn't have those little hooks in it. So, anyways, uh, oh, I forgot to mention, the, the seam to these is in the rear, so it's not a front seam. Uh, but these are totally cool for, like, if you want to get your kids an M1, but you don't want to pay, like, $70 for, you know, an M1 helmet that was actually a surplus one, this is a great alternative. Um, if you want to pop a different liner and go for it, but, like, this is the same size and shape as an M1. The bales look almost identical. Um, yeah, I really can't see the difference. And these do come in small sizes, so the 53 to 55 would be great for kids. You know, tiny little melons, and then you can always replace the liner, like I said. And they can go out and play World War II, they can go play Kelly's Heroes, or whatever they want to do. And, um, you know, you save money, and if it does get destroyed, it's not like it's a super rare piece of history, like an M1 is starting to become. So, yeah, it's a great alternative if you're a parent, or, you know, whatever, and your kids like to play with this stuff. It's a great alternative. These are like around 40 bucks in the U S so great, great, great helmet. Anyways, I'll quit rambling. Um, I really like these helmets. I have these available in my shop actually at Mike's military.com. All the large big boy sizes are sold out. And unfortunately I'm keeping the last one for myself. So I have a helmet for my collection, but uh, I've got the 56 to 58 and the 53 to 55 is available and ready to ship. So now that I just totally advertise for myself, I'll continue to conclude the video. Um, if you guys are new to the channel and you uh, haven't already liked this video and subscribed, if you could do that right now, that'd be fantastic. And then if you consider supporting me on Patreon for a dollar a month, I can go out and buy stuff like this and um, you know make videos on it and probably test it out in the field and do reviews on it and make more videos with guns and stuff like uh, the rest of my channel. If not, that's totally fine. I really appreciate you just watching. And for all my viewers and subscribers, uh, past and present, I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time.